So welcome back everyone to the stream. We have Mr. Nadim Bahadu with us, which, who will be talking about natural language processing and machine learning with Apache Spoke. Hello, Mr. Nadim, how are you doing? Hi, ah, yes, so thank you for inviting me to the session uh, and hi to everyone. So today's session is uh, obviously on natural language processing. Uh, it's a big term. So for, for the purpose of this session, we'll just call it NLP. Uh, it's short and easy. Uh, and obviously, we will have a look at machine learning is also another big term. Uh, uh, machine learning and AI, right, big terms at the moment. Um, and the, the tech stack that we will be using end-to-end uh, -end is Apache Spark. And um, it's a popular big data tool uh, in the AI space, especially. Uh, but if none of these makes sense, that's okay. I will take you through a journey of NLP uh, shortly. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Nadim. You have, I must say, you have a very interesting and impressive resume of trying of merging the financial markets with uh, uh, with computer science. I'm very okay. curious how that happened. Yes, yes, thank you. So thanks for the compliment, much appreciated. Uh, it's just I couldn't decide uh, what do economics or computer science. So I've been coding since I was 13. And then I moved off to, uh, you, you know, do higher studies and I ended up doing both. So this is what FinTech is all about at the moment. And along this journey, uh, I, I was mostly into finance, as you may have noticed. Um, and But finance today is actually data. Right? And data is tech. So, and this is what we will see a little presentation today. The techniques that we learn uh, are applicable to different domains, whether it's finance, genomics, text mining. Uh, the tools are the same, the domain changes, and that's what makes it very interesting today. Okay. We are looking forward for the presentation. You can you can start. Okay, sounds good. So um I uh, will be just scrolling down uh, through the slides because uh, we had an issue with uh, the full uh, screens uh, share. So, yes, yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, I guess we have a pretty interesting agenda. And uh, so we will talk about objectives for today. Uh, we will try to use NLP to classify and also to predict uh, something. Um, and the, before we get started, uh, there might be different people who are aware of NLP. So we'll talk a little bit, obviously, about what is NLP in the first place. What, where does machine learning comes into play? So a quick overview of machine learning. This is not a course in AI, but just the basics for everyone to follow. Uh, but also, why, why AI, right? Why, why machine learning? What's so interesting about this? And why is it so popular these days? Um, and uh, obviously, one of my tech stack that I'm um, uh, familiar with is Scala uh, programming language. This may be new for uh, the region uh, in Mauritius and also Africa, but obviously very popular abroad. Uh, a lot of the tools that you're using today, Twix, uh, the big tech companies uh, are very much Scala uh, enthusiasts, and for good reason. So we'll have a little overview of that too. And Apache Spark, right? Apache Spark is a big data tool, very popular uh, in the AI space. And as a matter of fact, uh, Apache Spark is part of a Scala ecosystem, uh, and we'll we'll see that in a little bit. But uh, our NLP pipeline today is something very real. So what I ended up doing for this presentation is uh, I took the latest COVID-19 data set uh, published from Kaggle.com. Kaggle is a very uh, popular online database uh, for AI and machine learning enthusiasts. And we're going to try to analyze text, uh, so research papers uh, that match to COVID-19 versus something else, something fun, so movie titles. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's get started. Uh, so yes, so hi everyone again. Uh, so as uh, was mentioned earlier, uh, I couldn't decide between economics and computer science, so I ended up doing both. Uh, so that is pretty much fintech. And my journey has, has taken me through various tier one banks, uh, building trading systems, uh, and, and really it's all about data. Data, merging technology, and, um, 
And across this journey, I've touched base across multi uh, asset classes from anything from fixed income to derivatives and to exotic climate risks. Uh, but at the moment, uh, you can find me uh, from my engineering blog, all about Scala. Uh, yes, I am a Scala enthusiast, and I hope to share this uh, the rest of, uh, of the crowd today. And also launching a new uh, social e-commerce platform in Mauritius called checkandco.com. And uh, that also brings the idea of semantics and how things are connected together, and hence NLP. So, but enough about me today, let's talk about NLP. So here's something real. Uh, we're going to try to uh, analyze um, a piece of text. So given a title, uh, imagine a, a stream of text coming through, a pipeline such as a Twitter feed, uh, or even something um, as uh, mechanical as loading different uh, research papers. Um, so how can we predict this piece of text is related to coronavirus versus movies? So if we look at the first text, clinical progression of patients with COVID-19, that's a title of a research paper uh, from the data set I mentioned. Uh, so that's clearly covid -related. So the machine has to be able to uh, say correctly, well, if we receive anything similar uh, and we will understand what similar means, uh, then that's related to COVID. So we want to classify this as COVID. Uh, the next one, The Avengers, well, it's a movie. Uh, we're trying to, so, so Avengers clearly, it's a, it's a movie. So we want to classify that one too, something completely different. The next one, uh, Mission Impossible. What's another title or a piece of text, right? Language, uh, English uh, in, that, in that regards. Uh, but NLP applies to obviously other languages as well. Uh, so that should be um, a classified as a movie. And the, the last one is obviously uh, COVID-19. But you can imagine this being a real system where a text is getting through the door and we want to classify information. So how do you really go about, uh, uh, where do you start? So an NLP pipeline uh, typically um, has different steps. Uh, and, and, and generally speaking, that's uh, the same for any AI, different steps that you go through. Now the very first step I, I've, I've, uh, I didn't put here, but it, the very first step is to get the data. And that's actually usually uh, quite intensive. You get the data, you have to play with the data, uh, you might have to transform the data. But assuming we have text, so the cat sat on the mat. So in NLP, the pipeline is, uh, you need to break down the terms uh, into what is called as tokens. So that's what we do. So, uh, and, and there is a particular function to do this. So it's a word tokenizer. Uh, the next thing, we want to know uh, how often, uh, certain words or certain terms uh, appear within this text. Um, now, term frequency is generally referred to the number that appears within a corpus of text. Uh, but for this purpose of, uh, of this presentation, term frequency in itself can be uh, expanded into uh, different meaning, uh, but for today, we'll just count it as a number of times. The words, um, a particular word show up uh, within a sentence. And uh, the magic really happens where uh, you need to try to differentiate a certain word or token um, between each other, right? So for that purpose, you need to uh, pick a, a model. Uh, so for today, uh, I will be using a logistic regression. If that doesn't make sense, uh, that's okay. We'll see what it means. But basically, you draw a line between two dots uh, and you try to um, classify one token on the left side and on the right side. Now, uh, regression in itself uh, uh, is a bit more for today, but let's just think about it as drawing a line. But logistic is interesting because the drawing of a line becomes more of a curve. 
That means you can uh, fine tune your certain para parameters to get the best outcome for what you're trying to. Uh, so obviously the NLP pipeline is more advanced as well. Uh, in the English vocabulary, uh, there are certain words that you want to remove, and these are typically called stop words. Uh, stemming also, you might want to do that. Things that are related to each other. Uh, so we're not uh, looking at those today. Uh, we'll really focus on, on creating a pipeline. So the next step is, uh, well, machine learning and AI, that's a bit scary to a lot of people. But at the bottom of it, uh, it's, it's not, right? We first need to identify what sort of learning we're going to use. Um, so in AI, there is what is called unsupervised learning or more things that connect naturally together or um, a bit more automation. So so clustering, neural nets, uh, so networks really, networks talking to each other. Uh, we're not doing this today, uh, but we will do something what is uh, typically, typically more mechanical. Mechanical is a term, uh, is an interesting term because it's something the human has more control uh, by fine-tuning parameters. So in our uh, case, um, we will be using logistic regression. Um, so logistic regression, we will be uh, sorting and, and sorry, classifying uh, COVID-19 text versus movie titles. Um, so, and, and basically we're just gonna put zeros and ones. That's all it is uh, without looking too much into um, the fine, fine tuning of these parameters. So anytime we see a text that relates to COVID-19, we're just going to label it as one. Uh, the machine will know anything related to one is COVID-19. Uh, we get another text uh, and maybe it's the Avengers, so that's a movie. So we know it's a movie and we're going to label this as zero. So now we start to classify using binary term zeros and ones uh, to different uh, piece of text. So COVID-19 versus movie titles. Uh, now classification in this case is just, as I mentioned, between two, uh, but it, uh, the supervised learning are different. Uh, you, can, you can continue to lift up um, your, your, your machine learning pipeline, different uh, tools. So uh, if you have multi, uh, multiple, uh, I guess, things to classify or to differentiate, then maybe you might want to use a Bayes regression. So Bayesian regression becomes quite interesting. Uh, if you have to do uh, a lot, if you're not sure about a certain decisions before the classification happens, then you may have to look at trees and clustering. That means as you're progressing, uh, you're trying to make certain decisions to group things together. Um, and then once you have an idea of certain clusters of data, then you draw the line, the whole regression idea. But again, for today, we are going to take it easy and uh, really focus on zeros and ones, as easy as it is. So anytime we see one, it is COVID-19 and uh, it's zero, it's, uh, it's by Avengers, it's uh, movie titles. So yes, we spoke about machine learning and uh, it's very popular at the moment, uh, AI as well, and, and it's a big hype, right? So, but what's, what's really going on under, under the hood? Um, so basically, a um, lot of problem sets, whether it's in finance, genomics, uh, we're trying to look for patterns, things that relate to each other or have been um, have related in the past, uh, and how we can predict uh, something may, may relate again so that we can make an informed decision. So machine learning is really about discovering patterns, uh, and that's a pretty interesting uh, diagram there on the genomic side. Uh, it's all about patterns. but um, for today, 
uh, we will get to this through various tooling and some of it may be new uh, within uh, in this region in Mauritius and also in Africa but as I mentioned very popular overseas at the moment so uh, we will be using Scala programming language now there are many programming languages in the world uh, one of the more popular one I guess uh, for a good few decades now has been Java right so Java runs on a JVM. We have a lot of developers on this talk. Uh, so maybe familiar with the JVM. Uh, so Scala was developed by uh, Martin Odersky. Uh, so, but actually Martin Odersky himself was working uh, back then for Sun and actually developed a lot of what uh, thing in Java. And along his journey, uh, there was a research piece of research. How can we bring in uh, more functional aspects to uh, the JVM and there's a lot of research published that you can uh, look at. Uh, but as he was working on generics as well in Java years ago, uh, the next step uh, became something um, what is known today as Scala. So Scala is, a, is a, it's not a new language, it's been around for more than a decade now, nearly two decades to be honest. Um, and has matured uh, quite a lot, but it tries to fuse, uh, bring all the features of uh, popular object-oriented programming. Uh, we live in a world where we can relate to things, to objects, so a book, a car, a title. But what's happening, or what has been happening over the past 10 years is big, right? So in the past, we have been burying code with data and that's great, but when you, when you, when you work uh, through terabytes of data, you want to separate the two. And uh, that's where functional programming comes into play. Uh, so you want to really function over data. So for example, in the NLP example, we might want a function uh, to uh, classify or to tokenize certain words. But the function is, is, is just that. It's, um, it's a function like uh, a sum, a plus uh, b uh, equals c, uh, something you can test, you can validate, and then you can throw in any piece of data into it. Uh, but at its core, uh, uh, Scala brings a lot more features. Uh, but one thing that's uh, sometimes left is uh, it works right out of the box with Java, so you don't have to change your existing code base. Just work with it. Uh, so the, G the Java C and Scala C work together, and um, and that becomes very interesting. So a lot of uh, documentation online uh, for those interested. Um, on obviously the official Scala doc, myself from my engineering blog and uh, my book that I published last year. Uh, so feel free to reach out afterwards. Uh, but um, a bit about Scala in itself. Uh, as I mentioned, it's been, um, has matured quite a bit, has gone up the ranking, and there are certain good reasons for that, and we will see uh, shortly. Uh, but the ranking is also synonymous of a lot of changes that's happening uh, in the big data and AI space. Uh, we want to function over data. We want to be able to run computation in parallel uh, because we are no longer dealing with uh, gigabytes of data, it's terabytes of data. Uh, and even in Mauritius, uh, there are there is terabytes of data uh, in certain sectors uh, that we should look into, you know, really uh, trying to get insights about our data. But why Scala really? Um, well, Scala, well, pretty much there is something for everyone, right? So, and that's how the the ecosystem has matured. So for today, we will obviously be focusing on Apache Spark. Uh, definitely uh, a, a very popular, if not the popular, uh, big data. Uh, so machine running machine learning at scale, right? Um, uh, using Apache Spark. There are other players, obviously, uh, as the system um, and innovation continues. But uh, Apache Spark is pretty much a de facto uh, in the AI space uh, to run computation at scale. Um, if within the Scala ecosystem, high throughput messaging, whether it's for your Twitter feeds coming through, 
through or stock exchange uh, prices being fed through, you want to be able to stream data. That's another big term lately, whether it's uh, COVID-19 coming through uh, or trying to classify diff different text. So streaming data, you want a high throughput messaging platform. Uh, so Kafka is there, uh, very popular. And how do you deal with all these concurrent uh, systems and data? Well, um, a lot of things have been built for you uh, and ready to be used, uh, including ACA, ACA streams, ACA clustering, and a lot of the nice things as well in the Sky ecosystem. It's very vibrant, right? It's very mature. A lot of frameworks, if you are a pure FP programmer, functional enthusiast, there are a lot of tools for you, including Shapeless, CAS, Scalas. Uh, and but if you just want to get a, a very nice middle tier website up and running as well, uh, there's a lot of tooling for you, including Play, Aka as well, and build tools, right? Build tools, plugin, uh, just to make your life easy. But pretty much there is something for everyone um, within this space. And the nice thing, as I mentioned, Scala just works hand in hand with uh, a lot of uh, the Java existing code base. Um, typically uh, it has been around at big organizations. Um, so the move is actually not that hard. But for today, uh, we will really focus on Apache Spark. And that may be new to um, a lot of uh, you perhaps, but uh, Spark is in itself an ecosystem where uh, there are different modules that you can pick and choose from. And that these were there from day one the whole idea of modularization, uh, I think, also played a big role as to um, uh, how it became quite popular. So for today, we'll be looking at um, data frames, uh, so Spark SQL, uh, to look and, and read our data uh, in, but Spark and also do streaming. And obviously, we'll be using certain machine learning uh, libraries uh, for and the NLP ones. There's also graph libraries built in, but at its core, uh, Spark and in the AI space, another reason why uh, it became very popular. Uh, you have a lot of data scientists, right? And and in different sectors or domains, you may be using R, for instance, in certain uh, in finance or in in in, in certain genomics. Uh, uh, sectors, but uh, you may also be using Python, right? Uh, or even Scala, or maybe some engineer wants to connect through uh, using a legacy Java. And that is okay. And, and using Spark, you have various connectors. Uh, there's even now a C sharp.net connector, uh, even a MATLAB, they're fairly recent. Uh, so the whole idea that um, Spark is not prescriptive of which programming language you use. Obviously, there are benefits of data for certain things uh, to use Scala, obviously, less overhead, things like this. Uh, but at its core, uh, you can connect using um, various languages, and that has been very powerful, especially in the AI space, uh, because data scientists as I mentioned, there are various sectors, uh, and some sectors are influential, say in R. Uh, others have existing uh, Python libraries, um, and, and others might be new fintech using fresh Scala. Uh, so there, there's, there's something again for everyone. So back to our NL, um, we will again classify COVID 19. Uh, Research titles uh, versus movies. Uh, something fun against movies. So the, the data set that I'm using is the latest published from Kaggle.com. If you're not familiar, Kaggle is the largest data science uh, community. Uh, any data set you're looking for, there's probably something there for everyone, uh, from finance to um, stock, stocks, uh, uh, genomics uh, data sets. Um, uh, lots of uh, uh, tools and notebooks and examples um, for you to uh, get familiar with these techniques. Uh, and obviously, another data set, again on Kaggle.com, is uh, the movies library, uh, something fun. 
Uh, that one is from Cornell University in the US. Uh, to give you a few samples, uh, so imagine some a stream of text coming through our NLP pipeline, uh, such as uh, the one labeled uh, for COVID-19 at the top um, versus the one uh, at the bottom uh, for, for movie titles. So for the purpose of this example, uh, of, this, of this session, uh, we will have two data sets, so COVID-19 text uh, and also uh, movies text. Uh, and, and yes, so now it's time to look at some code. Um, there's obviously no need to memorize any of this. Uh, I published it on my GitHub, uh, on all about Scala, um, and feel free to reach out afterwards. But I've kept the example very, um, very simplistic as well. So it's an NLB app, as simple as it is. There's a start, there's a stop. Uh, in Scala, you have built-in dependency injection. So when you launch the application, so I'm launching what is called a controller. I have all, all the things I need there to, for the framework I need. The framework needs, needs a bunch of services. The so dependency injections comes in right, right there. NLP services, something I made up. But uh, once again, with Scala, the flexibility is there. If I want to swap NLP services for a test services, or uh, you can just do that. Uh, so the very first thing we want to do is load data, right? So we will load two data sets I mentioned, uh, COVID-19 text and uh, movies titles, as easy as this. Now, when you load this data, uh, we typically want to call it something, uh, and that is typically a data that we will train. So we will train uh, the movie titles to be zeros, if you remember from the logistic reg regression, and also COVID-19 to be labeled as one. The next thing is the NLP pipeline, which is to tokenize uh, each word, and also to find these term frequencies, and and then to run as a logistic regression. But finally, we will want to predict, uh, given some random text uh, that I made up, uh, can we predict uh, clearly that this is uh, a COVID-19 related versus a, a, a movie title. Uh, so as I mentioned, we to get started, um, you need uh, to connect to some services, uh, Spark typically requires a context. The context is uh, a, a cluster. Um, for, the, for this session, it is just uh, the PC uh, that I'm using, so there's no cluster. Uh, you can also specify the number of calls that you want, things like that. And lots of configurations you can, you can, you can tween, tweak and fine tune. And we want to do ETL, ETL, ex extract, transform, load, which is a very first step in any AI pipeline, as I mentioned, uh, one of the more tedious one, because you want data that is curated, uh, tested and validated before you actually do any, any advanced uh, work on it. Uh, so for us, we are lucky because we are using uh, the latest published COVID-19 data set. The data is very clean, so I literally just had to grab uh, the, the COVID-19 titles. So if you look at this piece of code, uh, even if you're not familiar with, uh, with uh, Scala, uh, with programming, whether it's JavaScript as well, uh, it's a function, right? It's a function or a method in this case. Uh, so we're loading COVID-19 data and, uh, and we want to get back out of it. Um, a data frame is a construct uh, uh, that actually evolves from Python and then moved over to uh, Spark. Uh, it, it's a way to look at um, from a high level uh, data, right? From it, you have columns, rows, but then there are many other features that it provides you, obviously. Uh, so to, to, to read this data, you need to have access to a, a Spark context, uh, which, as I mentioned, is typically uh, you're connecting to a grid, a cluster, uh, but for COVID-19, uh, remember that we are going to uh, classify uh, uh, and label this 
uh, data as ones, uh, as easy as this. And then we load the second one, which is the movies, um, and uh, we label it as zero. The next thing uh, which uh, in the pipeline is actually to create a pipeline. Uh, and if you recall earlier, uh, in an NLP pipeline, uh, you typically need to tokenize, which means to break down these sentences into words or tokens. From there, you want to find out certain uh, term frequencies, how often uh, certain terms appear, things like this. And as I mentioned earlier, there's over, over curation that you have to do, uh, but we are ignoring at the moment, such as removing of uh, um, stop words uh, and stemming and all kind of and over linguistic things that you might want to uh, curate. Uh, but then we want to apply a, a regression. And for this purpose, we're going to do a simple logistic regression. And at this point, we have uh, all our data for having a training data set. That means we, we, we throw this data to Spark in, in this pipeline and we tell it, hey, go out now and, and train this for me. Uh, label the zeros and ones accordingly. Um, so once we have a training data set, uh, we, we want to now uh, trying to see uh, if the machine has learned something and we want to throw it, uh, we want to throw at it uh, a few texts. So the first one we will throw at, at it is, is the first text. This is the best Mission Impossible movie ever. Totally amazing. So clearly a piece of text as this one should come back uh, as a zero, as that, that is, um, we clearly predicted that is, this is a movie title. And the second one um, is fairly long, but yes, it's definitely related to COVID-19, is a global pandemic. Um, so clearly that should relate to the data set uh, for COVID-19. And what we will see in IntelliJ Sorry, the code editor uh, is, uh, is IntelliJ that I'm using, and we'll see it shortly. Um, we, we will see, hopefully, uh, that we correctly matched uh, these two uh, uh, sentences. And here's a live demo. So for that, I will now switch to uh, my code editor in a second. Yes, so the screen has switched now. And just to show you again, uh, the, the data set is really um, a, a bunch of sentences in a text file. Uh, but you can assume that this uh, pipeline typically runs uh, in a production system for classifying text uh, or, or, or analyzing text, streaming of data coming through. Uh, but we are simulating it today all in one shell, uh, say, movie's title. The second one is the COVID-19 research titles um, from Kaggle dataset. Uh, obviously, I took a snapshot. There's a lot more. Um, and that's also something you typically iterate through in a typical um, uh, NLP or AI pipeline, um, curating data and, 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 and the cycle goes on. Uh, so I also show uh, just how to kick off uh, this project in case uh, anyone grabs it from the GitHub, uh, the GitHub space. So if you recall, uh, the NLP app is where you start um, and um, it does all the magic. Um, we'll spend a little bit of time on, again, on the steps really for any machine learning pipeline in that regard is really to load data, right? And when you load data that you're going to train, that is you have applied, you're going to apply some things on this data. And in our case, our loading of data is really, we're going to load movies data. 
and we're going to label movies as zeros, and we're going to load um, COVID-19 data, and that's going to be labeled as ones. Uh, the next thing is creating a pipeline. Um, so this is a NLP pipeline, tokenizing the words, finding the number of frequencies, um, and also running a model, which is the logistic regression in that case. And, and then that gives us a training data set. And once we have the training data set, uh, we will throw um, uh, sentences, so the first one is related to movies, and the second one is related to uh, the global pandemic, unfortunately. Um, and we'll try to predict, we'll try to predict um, if the machine gets it right. So I will run it now. This is a live demo, always uh, something interesting. So step one, we can see we're loading the data and training it. Now, typically, over terabytes of data in a production environment, uh, training data is not something you do live, right? You typically have um, training data that is hot and warm and, and ready to be used, because uh, that uh, these uh, uh, these steps take uh, take a long time, usually over terabytes of data. Uh, the second step, uh, let me maximize this a bit. Uh, Yes, so the second step for us is to create an NLP pipeline that worked. Uh, so we had to tokenize, hash the terms, and run our logistic regression. But what we are more interested in today is the prediction. This is the machine learning bit, and the whole exciting uh, things about AI. Did we get it right or no? Uh, so in that case, everything worked fine. Uh, so we see a title. Uh, title is from COVID-19. Uh, and the prediction here is just one, uh, and that was related to uh, COVID-19, and we output the text here. Um, and then the next one is the label as zero, right? And if you recall, any sentence sentences that sounded like or looked like uh, a movie title, well, it had to be labeled as uh, so our demo was fine. I will switch back to the presentation. Yes, so nothing happened during the demo. That's great. Uh, nothing broke or anything. And uh, things just don't stop here. NLP is an interesting space, but one word that comes in mind is uh, and also in AI, right? Things are related, so connections on things. So uh, there's a term for this called semantics. Um, uh, things have meaning um, at some point in time. The, the top left bit here, by temporality, word to pronounce actually, uh, but things have meaning uh, with time, right? Why did I book this trade last year at this at this price, right? What was COVID-19 even a term used last year? Is it relevant today? Things like this. And, and graphs, right? It's more about connecting the dots. But when you look at graphs and semantics, uh, graphs really gives you the high level. I'm a friend of a friend. Uh, or this molecule is connected to this other molecule. But really, in the AI space, you are interested in what happens underneath at different layers subgraphs, right? Um, and, and this is where we try to define a uh, derived meaning and inspecting data. Uh, but back in Mauritius, right? AI is definitely a hot topic, uh, also in Africa and generally everywhere, right? But AI is not just driving uh, cars that drive themselves. Uh, I have a friend who actually works at Google and he tried it. And he did say it is something to get, really get used to, but it's it's not happening perhaps anytime soon, or, or maybe it will. Who knows? But robotics as well, right? Uh, a lot of interesting things happening in, in science. Uh, but um, we, at the moment, what uh, 
uh, we, we are always surrounded by with data, so we should start making sense of, of data that we already have. And there are various things that we can do. And, and with NLP, just NLP, uh, we saw text classification as a very basic example. And after that, typically you want to do a bit more digging, analyze what's going on under the hood. Um, uh, in, in real world, that brings us to things like sentiment analysis. Is my customer happy? Why is, uh, uh, why is he or she not happy? Uh, what happened during communication or things like that? Uh, or recommendation system, right? Uh, people have similar things that they connect to. They, they, uh, or even in things like cybersecurity, a uh, big topic as well. Um, and and also kind of related really KYC, uh, know your customer, I'm getting a piece of text and email, is this really the customer I've been used to dealing with or is this a fraud, right? Uh, market intelligence, big time as well, right? Really bringing Power BI to a shame, right? Power BI, right, is very popular. I have a nice pretty shell and nice dashboard. After that, it's just this. Uh, we want to know more about what's going on and where AI comes into play. Uh, digging into the data, digging into the semantics. Um, and yeah, so yeah, lots of real world applications and um, in, in AI and also in NLP. All these things apply to NLP. And uh, yes, and I think we're coming to a close now. And so thank you, everyone. And you can. Uh, Hope you enjoyed the talk. You can find me, I guess, at all about Scala, uh, Check and Cool, LinkedIn. Uh, I'm active in Africa as well, African projects. So reach reach me for SABDS. Um, and any questions? Happy to um, go back to the talk. Thank you very much, Mr. Adil, and very interesting and in-depth session. Uh, about the inner workings of machine learning and NLP. I certainly really enjoyed it. So in the chat, we have Wangen, who is a fellow Scala developer in Mauritius, who says hi. And okay, hello. He's asking if you're willing to do a Scala meetup in Mauritius. Yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, uh, advice. Yeah, we should definitely do it. Why not? Yeah. And we also have Ashish, who is asking how he can contact you regarding NLP. Uh, I'll just put your details on screen right now. Uh, yeah, so the details I shared, uh, my profile is online. You can contact me through all about Scala, LinkedIn, uh, various different methods. Uh, very interesting presentation. You've introduced NLP, Scala, and a very interesting demo as well, merging COVID-19 and movie title. Uh, I'm very curious about uh, your venture check and coup. Is it already launched yet? Can you tell us yeah. a bit more and the challenges? Yeah, uh, thanks for it. It's a, it's a help out um, with uh, COVID-19. Business came to a stop for a lot of SMEs, uh, yes. but uh, we can't do business. I guess uh, you can't scale a business uh, just for email, right? And, and that's okay for a small one. Uh, but after a few emails, you, you get a lot of headaches. So bringing automation, bringing semantics uh, into, into, in, into, into trading uh, SMEs, uh, e-commerce is the plan, is the whole idea of semantics, real time, um, both for the customer and for every Mauritian. So if I book an order, uh, I don't need to now scroll through email, find uh, the merchant. It's all in my dashboard. I log in. I, lots of automation. So definitely check it out. Um, so check in group.com. Okay, awesome. Was there, I was yeah. wondering, was there any challenges of implementing such a system in the local market that you've so, encountered? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's just live. Uh, we're on a soft launch at the moment. Uh, so we are, we'll be onboarding a number of SMEs, so do get in touch. Uh, lots of SMEs out there. Um, but challenges is capacity building, right? So the product has a good feature list at the moment. We can scale as needed. Uh, it's all on cloud. Uh, so, but the cloud does not run in Mauritius. Uh, we can bring the cloud to Mauritius or closer um, as needed. 
Uh, so see, these are really uh, some of the challenges. Um, and the more okay. feature sets that we, we receive uh, from the business community, happy to add. Um, and, and, and these would be uh, really uh, the main challenge will be infrastructure, right? Uh, but with cloud, uh, lots of things we can click of a button today. Okay. Thank you. And I think we have uh, one last question from Mangan. Oh, actually, we have uh, some questions coming in. So uh, Mangan is asking, uh, where do you see AI in Mauritius? So maybe in what sectors do you see AI in Mauritius? Yeah, I mean, the first one is uh, fintech, right? Uh, finance, KYC, right? I need to know my customer, right? Uh, banking, I want to be able to uh, do fraud detection, right? Um, a customer has multiple accounts, right? Why is that? Um, the person I'm dealing with in Africa, is it a real person I'm, I'm supposed to know? Uh, does he have other things related abroad? Uh, so the whole idea of semantics again come into play. Finance, that's a big one. Uh, and then obviously uh, e-commerce is booming in Mauritius. We want to understand customer behavior. We want to know, uh, and, and also I don't want just to receive a piece of uh, advertisement, advertisement saying, hey, buy this ice cream today. We want to send a customer something that relates to him or she. Uh, so uh, we, we want to bring semantics, right? The big word again. Uh, so yes, lots of uh, interesting projects in Mauritius as well. Um, there's some obviously some uh, pharma initiatives as well in Mauritius. Um, COVID-19, we should get involved, right? Thank you. And we have a question that just came in from Pravin, who is asking, have you worked with robo-advisors on market analysis? Yeah, so online chats, uh, chatbots, these are interesting. Uh, and there's, uh, there are definitely a lot of off-the-shelf ones. Uh, that gets you up and running literally by click of a button uh, through a cloud provider. But um, once again, you want to derive meaning for your particular context, for your particular domain. So one, uh, what's interesting uh, in finance, uh, had a little play with, was in the insurance sector uh, abroad, obviously, uh, that, that's bringing um, AI into chatbots. So I can log in and buy a policy or the chatbot gives me correct information. So training that data set becomes interesting. Uh, and also in the call center, right, in, at the end, right, uh, we are already very active in various chats um, uh, abroad uh, with foreign businesses. Uh, we can uh, elevate and lift um, our feature set uh, by training this data and not just taking in what the client is, is asking, but also going back to the client and saying, hey, by the way, uh, you can do this and this and this. Uh, really to help you. So yeah, flipping the question back to them and uh, keeping that cycle going is really looking at data. Uh, chatbot is very interesting because it is you bring in streams of data, right? Similar to the example I mentioned. You have text coming through, right? And you need, you need to be able to, um, I guess, uh, create or predict something um, quite quickly. Thank you. So, and we also have some young the chat saying thanks for the great presentation. And okay, I think thanks. this brings us to the end of this session. Presentation. If anybody is interested in starting to learn Scala, kickstart your learning. Uh, with Nadim's book, Scala for Beginners, available at okay, allaboutscala.com. All right, thanks. Also, the Thank online, lots of examples there. Thank you for your time. Bye bye. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye.